we begin with the nuclear components in the Rose Garden in the backyard in Baghdad. It is important with a story like this to understand both what it is and it is something and what it is not. It is not the smoking gun, a deal clincher that the Iraqis had an active nuclear program in the days before the war. We have two reports tonight. We begin first with CNN's David Ensor. CNN has learned that the Central Intelligence Agency has in its hands the critical parts of a key piece of Iraqi nuclear technology, parts needed to develop a bomb program that were hidden in a backyard in Baghdad. The parts were dug up by this man, Iraqi scientist Mahdi Ubaidi, who had hidden them under a rose bush 12 years ago, under orders from Qusay Hussein and Saddam Hussein's then son-in-law, Hussein Kamel. They are the key parts and documents for reconstructing a sophisticated gas centrifuge system for enriching uranium for bombs, shown exclusively to CNN at CIA headquarters in Virginia. Former UN Arms Inspector David Kay, now in charge of the CIA effort, started work earlier this week in Baghdad. We spoke to him about the case over a secure teleconferencing line from CIA headquarters. It begins to tell us how huge our job is. Remember, his material was buried in a barrel behind his house in a rose garden. There's no way that that would have been discovered by normal international inspections. I couldn't have done it. My successors couldn't have done it. The gas centrifuge equipment dates back to Iraq's pre-1991 efforts to build nuclear weapons. Experts say the documents and pieces Obeidi gave the U.S. were the critical information and parts to restart a nuclear weapons program and would have saved Saddam's regime several years and as much as hundreds of millions of dollars for research. What did you think about seeing all this stuff on a table in the CIA? Uh, it was a realization I hadn't gotten all the parts. Uh, I certainly hadn't gotten all the documentation, so th there was a moment, a pang of uh, regret, uh, but there was also a, almost an exhilaration that now maybe we have a chance to take this to the very bottom. U.S. officials emphasize this is not a smoking gun. This is not evidence Iraq had a nuclear weapon, but it is evidence the Iraqis concealed plans to reconstitute their nuclear program as soon as the world was no longer looking. Now, CNN had this story last week, but made a decision to withhold it from broadcast after a request from the U.S. government citing safety and national security concerns. The U.S. government has now told us the security and safety issues have been dealt with, and there's no risk now in telling the story. Aaron? With Saddam's fate still a question mark, it isn't hard to understand why an Iraqi scientist might be reluctant to talk today. CNN's Mike Fetcher did speak with the scientist who did the talking in this case. That I had this is why Mahdi Obeidi, the Iraqi nuclear scientist, says he came forward. A complete system that can reconstitute a nuclear program would be something that if it could fall in the hands of, I mean, dictators or terrorists or any other group, it might really do I play havoc in the destiny of humanity. And therefore I felt it is an obligation, an urge that I should take these things, I mean, which involved uh, designs, documents, and the critical centrifuge materials to take it into uh, safe hands. We can't tell you where we interviewed Obeidi, only that he and his family are now safely out of Iraq. He says he's turned over parts and plans required to make a gas centrifuge, a key tool for enriching uranium to make nuclear bomb material. But he says he wasn't the only scientist ordered to hide this kind of equipment. I think there may be more than three other copies. And I think it's quite important to look at all these so that they would not fall in the hands of the wrong people. He says if the Iraqi government had retrieved the documents and parts, it would have shortened the time needed for Iraq to make a nuclear weapon by three years. There was that intention and there was that concealment mechanism and it was awaiting the right time. However, mysteriously, Obeidi says even after UN inspectors left Iraq in 1998, he never got the order from Saddam Hussein or any of his lieutenants to dig up that rose garden. Still, he is certain that if Saddam Hussein would have st stayed in power, he would have gotten that order someday. Aaron?
Just to be clear on that last point, what he is saying is after the inspectors left that the regime did not, to his knowledge at least, reactivate their nuclear program, correct? No, they did not. In fact, he's saying that they left it alone from the point he buried it in 1991 up until now, although he told me in the interview that he had received additional information that there may have been a parallel program in 2002, a conceptual program, to think about putting this back together. But he is certain that he would have been called to be part of that team because he led the program that actually developed it back 12 years ago. Last night in a CNN exclusive, we told you how the CIA had its hands on a key piece of Iraqi nuclear technology, parts to develop a bomb program, nuclear bombs. The parts were dug up in a backyard under a rose bush in Baghdad. Now the man who put them there is the same man who ended up handing them over to the United States. Why is he going public now? National correspondent Mike Betcher has this exclusive report. This is why Dr. Mahdi Obeidi, one of Saddam Hussein's top nuclear scientists, went public. I was uh, with, uh, eating breakfast with uh, my wife and uh, I heard some very loud uh, noise outside and the noise started to grow, to grow even more. And then we were, we were really scared. We thought somebody was coming to kill us. It was the 3rd of June and it was the U.S. Army not there to kill, but searching for Obeidi. They uh, used uh, something, I don't know what's, uh, something uh, big and huge, and they broke in this door. Many of uh, soldiers came here. The family was terrified. With, uh, with, uh, with, a, with a loud uh, voice, you know, it. go, 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 go. The scene the family describes was similar to other raids witnessed by CNN as the army searched for evidence of weapons of mass destruction. But the problem? Obeidi was already cooperating with the U.S. government, the CIA. Because only two days earlier, I had given uh, a whole complete program to the Americans of the, the centrifuge program. Uh, and uh, I've shown uh, my full cooperation with them. He had dug up his rose bushes in his yard and turned over what he had hidden there, plans and parts for making a gas centrifuge, a key component in making the fuel for a nuclear bomb. Obeidi says he was promised protection by the CIA, but now he felt in danger. His handlers, he said, seemed to be reneging. And with the raid on his house, he feared he was not only a target for Saddam loyalists for giving up Iraq's secrets, but inexplicably also now a target of the U.S. military. But fortunately for Obeidi, he was able to reach the one American he really knew, David Albright, a former weapons inspector whom he had met and lied to many times during U.N. inspections in the 1990s. Albright had originally facilitated Obeidi's contact with the U.S. government, but it had not been easy. I think what happened, unfortunately, is that there, there, there is no policy in the U.S. government to allow these scientists to come to the United States. There is no plea bargain policy. And I think there were people in the bureaucracy here who just didn't want to make a deal. So he was trapped. And, uh, and that's really what I think led... Um, he and I to think that the situation had reached a dead end and, and that his best choice was to uh, go public. And Obeidi contacted CNN. Just two days after U.S. officials learned he had contacted us, Obeidi and his family were whisked out of Iraq by the CIA. That U.S. Army raid, the CIA well, now admits, was that. a mistake. Like I say, there are many units operating in Baghdad right now, and it was a case, genuine case of lack of full coordination. And the CIA says the breakdown in communications was a misunderstanding. Wednesday, we met Obeidi in a location we promised not to identify, where he told us he hoped lessons could be learned from his attempt to cooperate. Other Iraqi scientists, he said, were closely watching his fate. Well, I think the soft touch approach is the best approach. On Thursday, that message resonated at the White House. Well, we're hopeful that this example will lead to other Iraqi scientists stepping forward to provide information. So far, few have come forward. Until now, they've told CNN they are unsure of the U.S. policy, 
wondering if they would be welcomed or treated as criminals or left vulnerable to reprisals by remnants of the Saddam regime. For example, one scientist we interviewed denied having anything to do with weapons programs and said he okay. wasn't it's afraid. Okay. But as CNN producer Maria Fleet left his home, this note was secretly passed to her by his daughter. He is afraid of telling the truth because of the dangerous situation Saddam put us in. Please help us and make sure of our safety, and if you could make it possible to leave Iraq forever. Obeidi says he told the truth, and he is now safely out of Iraq, after he finally felt he could dig up those top secret papers and parts he'd stashed a dozen years ago under that rose bush.